While Su Chen was in the arena, Tian Yu and Mayo Paiyuan took advantage of this moment to save the girl's brothers. Mayo Paiyuan, who was behind, put her brother's shoulder over his own shoulder, placed the other hand on his chest, and they started walking towards them. He clenched his teeth tightly and closed one eye. Mayo Paiyuan turned his head towards him and upon seeing his expression, he couldn't help but start wondering what was happening. Tian Yu who was in front put the bald man's shoulder on his own shoulder, and while he was walking, he started to look at him and asked the two to rest here for a while. He put his hand on his chest, and with a smile called out to his little sister. Upon hearing the bald man's voice, the girl turned around, and seeing that both were alive, she couldn't help but start sweating and feeling relieved. She asked them if they were okay. Duan Yu who was next to her, started looking at her brothers, and seeing their state, she became somewhat sad. The girl's brothers approached a little, and to prevent her from worrying they began to smile. With a cheerful look the bald man thanked her because if it hadn't been for her, they would have already lost their lives. The girl approached Duan Yu, gave her a hug and with a sincere look revealed to them that in reality it had been Su Chen who had saved them. Duan Yu started to look at the girl and remain thinking in silence. At the same time, someone came out of the water and began to walk, leaving a trail of water along the way. This person was Na. Some time later, she put on her clothes and entered a laboratory. In front of her was a man with blue hair who wore glasses. He was her boss and was enjoying a glass of wine. He started to look at the screen with a calm gaze and asked her if Su Chen was the special research material she had talked about. While she was walking towards him, she crossed her arms, started looking at the ground, and answered yes to her boss. She also added that by using Su Chen's genes they were going to be able to investigate the problem of genetic instability in the apocalypse. At the same time, mutant rats came out of the cage, and with a suffocating look began to approach Su Chen. He simply put both hands into his pants pockets, started looking at the ground and remained silent. Na's boss explained to her that these mutant rats had been created using the latest technology, so they were were bigger and fiercer than before. He slightly turned his head towards her, and with a calm look revealed that Su Chen was going to die here. For him, Su Chen was not worthy of being special experimental material. He began to look at the screen, and upon seeing what was happening, he couldn't help but be somewhat astonished and start wondering what this power was. Three mutant rats came out of the cage and prepared to attack, but Su Chen wasn't going to let that happen. Just before the rats had time to move, Su Chen drew his dagger, started running at great speed and in the blink of an eye attacked the rats, cutting their bodies into pieces, causing them to open their mouths and start screaming in agony. Upon witnessing this, the bald man was in shock. He began to look at Su Chen with a surprised look. He couldn't believe that he had eliminated the rats in an instant. Tian Yu who was next to him was left speechless. With a look full of fear he began to question if this was still the same Su Chen they knew. Captain Guo did not expect Su Chen to be able to face three mutant rats. With a disdainful look, he called him Brat. After killing the rats, Su Chen began to clean his shirt with his hand. With a calm look, he started to carefully observe the corpses of the rats and soon realized that these rats also did not have crystal cores. At the same time, the loudspeaker started to sound and someone began to cough and asked everyone to pay attention. The corpses of the rats fell to the ground, causing mist to appear. Su Chen let his arms drop to his sides, started looking at the ground, and remained silent. In front of him was a platform, and on top of it sat Captain Guo on his throne. Next to him was a woman who was chained. The person who had activated the loudspeaker was none other than Na's boss. He approached the microphone and while observing everything, he began to smile and informed Captain Guo that Su Chen was the test subject he needed. He gave the order to Captain Lao Guo and Tian Yu to capture and bring Su Chen to the laboratory. Guo knew that Tian Yu was on Su Chen's side. Now that the boss had spoken, he couldn't help but start smiling because Tian Yu was finished. Tian Yu panicked and while sweating thought that this was not good. Their boss wanted to capture Su Chen to experiment on him whether he was alive or dead. The mist started to get thicker, and Su Chen who was standing on the arena, remained calm, began to look at Captain Guo and prepared for any possible attack. Duan Yu started sweating, she extended both hands to the sides, and with a worried expression thought that Su Chen was in danger. Mayo Paiyuan, who was behind her, approached her and with a shout caught her attention and asked her to follow him since it was time to leave here. The situation no longer looked good. 
If they didn't leave now, they wouldn't be able to do so later. Despite being in shock, she tried to stay calm. She wasn't going to leave while Su Chen was here, she wasn't going to leave him alone. Captain Guo stood up, started to approach the mace and while he was laughing out loud, he told Tian Yu that he had heard that they were brothers. Everyone who was in the university had survived thanks to the boss, so he asked him which side he was going to choose. Tian Yu started to look at the ground with a lost gaze and began to think about what to do now. Su Chen started to look at Tian Yu and asked him what was happening. He raised his head and with a calm voice explained that their boss was named Liu Han who at the beginning of the apocalypse had developed a potion that could make people stronger, therefore he was the person who controlled the university. With a serious look, he began to stare at the ground and revealed to him that the potion Liu Han had created drained one's life force in exchange for power, so once they no longer had the potion, they would become weaker than anyone else. Su Chen understood how Tian Yu felt, so with a cheerful look, he asked if he was willing to come with him if he told him that he had a solution to this problem. Tian Yu didn't even lift his gaze and apologized to Su Chen because he had no other choice. Upon seeing this, Captain Guo stood up and couldn't help but start laughing like a madman since he didn't expect to see a show today where two brothers were going to face each other. For him, this was very interesting. He began to stare intently at Tian Yu and with a smug smile, asked him to hurry up as the boss was waiting. He grabbed the mace, jumped, and while advancing towards Su Chen, told Tian Yu that it was time to get down to business. Su Chen started to look to one side and upon seeing this, decided it was time to get serious. At that moment, someone made a great leap and just before Captain Guo could approach Su Chen and attack, Tian Yu appeared and gave him a strong kick in the face and told him that today he did not want to choose. His kick was so strong that Captain Guo's heavy body shot towards the ground. Guo, who was holding two maces with his hands, crashed into the ground, causing him intense pain. Several seconds later, Tian Yu landed on the ground, and while he had one hand clenched into a fist, he removed his armor with the other. He began staring at him aggressively and prepared to strike again. Captain Guo, who was lying on the ground, couldn't help but start to get angry. He stood up, lost his composure, started shouting and asked if he was challenging the boss. Tian Yu's body began to emit a powerful aura. He remained calm and with a serious look told him that their boss was a rat who was only using the potion to control everyone. He turned his back on Su Chen and decided to fight since his life no longer mattered. Su Chen, who was standing behind him, was somewhat confused as he didn't know what was happening or why he was behaving this way. Duan Yu and Mayo Pai Yuan were somewhat surprised. Su Chen began to look at him with a cheerful gaze and with a smile thought that he hadn't changed at all. With a serious look, Tian Yu told Guo that if anyone dared to touch his brothers, then they would have to deal with him. Su Chen saw in him the same Tian Yu he had known in school. He gathered momentum, started advancing towards Guo, and prepared to attack. While he was holding the two maces, he stood up, and seeing that he was courting death, decided to crush them both together. Tian Yu approached him, clenched both fists tightly, adopted an offensive stance and told him that he still had a long way to go before he could defeat him. He clenched his teeth tightly and just before Guo could do anything, he launched a chain of punches towards him, which began to impact against his body. Despite receiving a lot of blows, Guo continued as if nothing happened. He started looking at him and with a smile revealed that the boss already knew that he was going to betray him and for this reason had been giving him level 1 potions while he had been using level 2 ones. Upon knowing this, Tian Yu's expression changed drastically. He couldn't help but start sweating and remain in shock. Duo took advantage of this distraction, grabbed the two maces with both hands, raised them to the sky, prepared to attack and while his eyes were shining, revealed to him that his fat was the best defense, no one could hurt him. Using all his strength, Guo attacked him using the maces, but luckily Tian Yu reacted in time and caught both maces, avoiding death. However, due to the great difference in strength between them, he was injured, he opened his mouth and started spitting blood. The strength that Guo had was so enormous that the ground began to break into pieces, but despite this, Tian Yu grabbed the maces even harder, clenched his teeth tightly and decided not to give up. His veins became larger. Seeing this, Guo couldn't help but start smiling. He started staring at him and told him to go to hell. The mace had a button. He pressed the button, causing an electric charge to appear around the mace. Tian Yu, who was bleeding, soon realized that there was also electricity in the meteor mace. The electric charge began to approach Tian Yu and seeing this, he couldn't help but panic and think he was finished. At that moment, someone appeared and gave a strong kick to the mace, causing Guo to let go of it. As a result, the handle started moving towards his face. He began to sweat and with a look full of fear started wondering what was happening. This person was none other than Su Chen. 
He placed both feet on top of the two maces and pushed hard, causing one to pierce Guo's eye and the other his chest. He mocked him by asking if no one could hurt him. Tian Yu was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe that Su Chen had actually managed to injure Captain Guo. Duan Yu and Mayo Paiyuan were in shock and dumbfounded at the same time. They couldn't believe what their eyes had just seen. Liu Heian, who was observing all this from the laboratory, simply remained silent. This is the end of the video. If you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.